What's going on everyone, Titan here with my first Ruby review. Alright, so I'm really excited here, I'm a massive Ruby fan and Volume 4 just launched today. Um, for all those who are a member of the Rooster Teeth First community, however, it looks I think you guys got this last week or a couple days ago, um, but for me and everybody else who is not a member of the Rooster Teeth First program, this just came out today, and I am really excited here. This is one of my all-time favorite animated series. I love this series so much, and Volume 4 it starts off incredibly strong. Um, first off, I just want to mention the animation quality and just the general quality of the series in general has just gotten to a whole new level. I mean, keep in mind, people, that this series is essentially a web series. I mean, this is created by a group of people cr doing YouTube videos at, at its core, and yet it has the animation quality, I would say, on par with pretty much any animation studio. I mean, if you look at, you know, Star Wars Rebels or the DreamWorks Dragon series or, you know, any of these syndicated or not syndicated, any of these regular TV series that are like 3D animation, Ruby's on par with all of them in terms of their, their quality. And I would say in some levels even better. So I just want to give serious shout outs to the Ruby team, the, the Kruby. The animation in this has just reached a whole new level. I mean, the, the scenery, the, the the level design, not the level design, the environmental design just looks so much better in this season so far. All right, so we started out this season with a very dark and really nice scene where you see these grim kind of rise from this pool of this black, inky liquid. Um, and then you see Emerald in almost like horror. She's like in shock about it. Which is very interesting because there was a lot of fan theory going around right after season three came, or right after season three finished, that Emeralds may become a good guy. Um, that she, you know, she was, for those of you who don't remember, she was the one that was responsible for tricking Yang into being disgraced in the tournament by thinking that she broke someone else's leg. She was also one that was responsible, horribly responsible, for Pira inadvertently killing Penny with her illusions. And during the last episode of that season, we saw that she kind of had a look of regret. She was kind of saddened by the destruction that she helped cause. And the first scene that we see in season four is this look of shock on her face that like almost disgust about what's going on in front of her. And that fan theory of her switching sides looks more and more accurate. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm really curious on what they're going to be going along with that. Um, shortly after that, we see kind of a council of bad guys here. We have Cinder who... Apparently, Ruby really messed up. <laughs> we see, we you know, we learned that her eye that she, her original eye that she took from Autumn, I guess is missing. Um, it looks some, whatever Ruby did, did something to her. Um, Cinder cannot talk. Her left eye, I guess, is missing. And the other villains at the table are kind of poking fun at her and, you know, jabbing at her for losing to Ruby. We also see some other villains here. It looks like we got some guy with a nice little mustache here who definitely seems to be kind of a a pompous general strategist type character. And then we see this crazy guy who's kind of squatting on the chair. He has really thin eyes, a very thin face. Um, I don't know what to think of this guy. I love his design. He definitely seems like a complete lunatic. And I just really want to see what he does moving forward. And then we see the reveal of Salem. And you just kind of realize that this whole time we've been dealing with Cinder and this crew. And she was just like an underboss. She was an underling to Salem. I mean, that can only speak volumes to how powerful Salem is. I have no idea what she is. Is she one of the maidens? Is she... I, I'm just lost for words on what she is. I, she doesn't seem human. I wonder if she's like some sort of human grim hybrid, if she like fused with the grim or something. Because, I mean, just one look at her face, you can tell that's 
that that's not normal. She is she is not normal. Uh, but she definitely takes pity on Cinder. I mean, she calls her young Cinder, has her, you know, by her side to heal. So she definitely is babying Cinder. Um, for what she did to Beacon, and she's very impressed with her for what she did to Beacon, despite the fact that the others are kind of poking fun at her for it. Uh, shortly after we get that scene, we you know that she divvies the the assignments. We got the uh, the mustache guy. I can't remember their names. I'm sorry. I'll probably post them in the video somewhere. But we got the guy with the epic mustache. He is being um, sent to Mistral in Cinder's place to meet with their contact. You got the the big, you know, the really weird, scary, psychotic guy that I was mentioned earlier. He's being sent to hunt down Ruby. So that's interesting. And then we have the third guy over here. Um, I think his name is Hazel. He's being sent to the White Fang to coordinate with their efforts. So it looks like they're getting, all the bad guys are kind of getting a boost with some serious firepower here. So I'm very curious as to what's going on there. And then we hit a weird spot. It cuts to this kid on a farm. No dialogue, no explaining who he is. I'm sure it's going to come back later, and I, I know it's going to come back later, but it feels very out of place. Like, it doesn't need to be in this episode. It doesn't need to be in episode one. Episode one, you know, it starts off strong with getting to know the villains, their, their not their backstory, but their motivations and their organization. And then we also have Ruby's story and we get to see what's going on there. And then this, just this random kid on a farm doing farm stuff. It's just, it's very out of place. I don't, I don't like it. I've, I'm sure there are a bunch of people out there that think that this is a good setup for a new character, but I just think this is the wrong time for it. This could have been done in episode two. It could have been done, you know, before the, you know, it could have been done later on when that character becomes more relevant. Just doing it here just seems like a buffer transition between villain and then the heroes. And when we do see the heroes, we get this nice little comical thing with Nora and Ren talking about the team names. That Nora wants it to be Junior because she wants John to be the leader. And Ren wants it to be Ranger because he wants Ruby to re be re be leader and i just like the little banter there um to speak uh, you know to go with these i love their new their new designs you got they got longer hair nora i think they got longer hair i'll have to go back and watch the previous seasons um, but nora and ren their hair seems to be a bit longer everybody just seems to be a bit more mature and grown up i have no idea what the time difference is between season three and four but they seem to be older like they've like there's been some noticeable time difference um, most noticeably is Ruby. Like, her entire outfit changed. I, it's like her entire character has changed in terms of aesthetics. And it starts off with them fighting this amazing rock monster. I mean, it's a nice character design. I love the fact that they're introducing new Grimm. Every, every season, I think they've introduced new types of Grimm. And this one has, so far, has been my favorite. And the key thing with this battle, my favorite part of this battle, is how reliant the team is on John. I mean, John throughout the early seasons has been the comic relief. He's been the, you know, the, the dopey sidekick character. And the fact that he's stepped up and he's been the strategist is what he's been called. I mean, there's a line where he says, you don't need a weapon, you're the strategist. I mean, the fact that he's taken seriously as this leader character. I just love it. John is one of my favorite characters, and I love the fact that he's being taken much more seriously, and people are relying on him in battle more. I just love that that whole aesthetic. And I love the fact that Team Ranger is coming together as a serious team. I love the fact that they're integrating Ruby into their team attacks uh, with, the, with the final attack that Ruby and Nora do together how just powerful that is so ruby just goes in with her her speed semblance which boosts nora's strength semblance and they just hit the rock monster and just completely destroy it it was it was so good i love that design aspect of it uh after we after we defeat the the monster we see that you know it was actually a job to protect a local village that you know i guess this i think they called it a ghast i think is what they called it um, so they were hired to protect it, and they said that they wish they could give them more, and Ren said their previous 
arrangement was fine. And I guess their previous arrangement was new equipment for Jean. And right in the feels. I mean, holy crap, Rooster Teeth. You know how to just start off a series and just, like, wrench your fan base's heart with with Jean's new equipment. So we, start, we, we first we see a new chess piece, and then you get a nice little comical bit with Ruby and Jean um, about what's on Jean's hoodie underneath his armor. And then you see that, you know, the, the, the shopkeeper comes out and he talks about how awesome this metal is. And he, you know, he's curious as to where he got the metal. And you just see hints of Pira's design work throughout Jean's new equipment. And Jean just says, a friend. And I was almost in tears when he said that. The fact that, you know... They smelted down Pira's equipment. I'm thi- I'm assuming that's what they're talking about. I mean, I can't think of anything else it is. They, they smelted down Pira's equipment and reforged it into John's new weapons. And that just, that hit me right, right in the feels. I mean, that was gut-wrenchingly amazing. It was so good. I just, nothing but applause for Rooster Teeth for doing that. Um, shortly after that, then it cuts to Weiss, um, over an Atlas, I'm assuming. And I guess that's kind of what this season is going to be. It's going to be bits of Ruby's story and then a bits of Yang, Weiss, and Blake's story. And they're all going to be told, I, I'm assuming it's going to be roughly the same story, just told from different perspectives as they progress. And I'm really looking forward to that. This is such a strong start to a new a new season of Ruby. I'm a huge fan. I cannot wait to see more. I am not a member of Rooster Teeth First, so I can only see these episodes when they come out to the public on YouTube, pretty much. Um, in the meantime, I cannot wait for Chapter 2. I'm very curious as to what the story is going to be. I can't wait to see who that... Um, I can't wait to see... Who, um, what the villain's true plans are, what they plan on doing. I can't wait to see, you know, Team Ranger progress and become, you know, more of a cohesive team together. I'm curious as to what Yang and Blake are doing. So, yeah, I mean, this, this season started off very strong in introducing new characters, new concepts, new plot devices, and they just... They just ended it with so many questions. It just they ended it with you wanting more and wanting to know what happens next. And I think that's the point of a the start of a season. That's the point of a season premiere is to get you wanting to know what happens next. So yeah, with all that said, I give I give season four, chapter one, the next steps. I give that a two thumbs up. That was a great start to a season, and I can't wait to see more. All right. Thank you for joining me with my first Ruby review. I expect to do these every single week as soon as they drop on YouTube. So stay up to date with that. Hit that like and subscribe button, and we will see you next time. All right. Bye.